Aloha and welcome to the Embodied Healing Self Podcast with your host, Jen Mons. Each week, join me for soul-inspired, conscious conversations around embodied healing and awakening to your soul's purpose. Thank you for listening in. Have you ever wondered why adults get so serious and become so boring later on in life? (laughs) I've been talking about this with my kids. And so, full disclosure, I have two daughters. Uh, They're very different, as many of you probably know if you're, if, if you're a parent, if you have more than one child, they're usually like complete opposites. And one of them is super focused and in, intense and very driven, and the other is very free-spirited and confident and sensitive. Well, both are probably pretty sensitive. They're both absolutely 100% lovely, beautiful human beings. And I was asked this question, and it's so true. Like, my focused, driven daughter, I, I said to her, like, stop trying to grow up so fast like you got to have fun there's there's plenty of time to be a boring adult because look at just look at all the adults they're not having as much fun as you you don't have to take things so seriously and she reminded me well you do I was like oh yeah I'm I'm kind of believe it or not the intense driven one as much as I 100% absolutely love adventure and joy and fun and all the things like that I I love to be all in. And that's how I got to where I am. It's how I practice. That's why I practice meditation and yoga and movement and life and health coaching and all the things because I actually really love to be in that intense energy. I love to be fierce. I love to really fight for what I love. I love to, I as a child growing up, I love to compete in sports and, you know, f- winning is fun too. And over the years, I've I've learned so much magic in surrender and there's so much magic in in just enjoying the moment, but it it doesn't change who I am at my core, which is a a very passionate person. And I love hard. I take life. I do take things seriously. I'm probably not the most lighthearted people. So some of you might be able to relate to this. My husband, on the other hand, is very positive and lighthearted and we have conversations about this I'm like you know babe sometimes it might be a little too positive like sometimes like we need to have constructive feedback it helps us with our growth and of course you know I do life coaching so my kids will even say to me I want you to be my mom not my life coach I'm like oh my gosh here I go again like I just have such a love for life in my own way and my husband has a love for life in his own way which includes enjoying every moment which is what I try to do but also I love life and trying to like maximize the experience so some of you might relate to this and the truth is is that we all take everything too damn seriously I'm just gonna say it it is serious but it doesn't have to be right like think about something that you're that you're just so serious about in your life right now. Like I've I've got to make this much money. My kid has to get straight A's. My kid has to go to this college. I I have to be the best at this. I've like I got to stay healthy. I got to look a certain way. I I I have to do this. I life has to be like this. I got to go on all these adventures and vacations. I got to make time for vacation. I have to make this amount of money. I have to Look this beautiful. I keep saying those two because those are the ones that I hear a lot. Why are we putting so much pressure on ourselves? Who cares? Is that what you're going to take with you at the end of your life? I mean, all those things are really nice and they make us feel good about ourselves. And it's all that external validation. But if you remember that sense of belonging versus fitting in is all about knowing your worth without external validation. So how do we stop taking life so seriously? And are we wrong for taking it so seriously? Well, some things are serious, right? Our health can be serious if we've had a health crisis. Our relationships with loved ones can be serious if we've lost our loved ones. Having the right and the freedom to make a choice can be serious if we've had that taken away. We may feel 
like it's super important to fight for something that was taken from us or that we value. And I'm not saying don't do that. It's really more in the attachment to the outcome that becomes too serious because we become, because our whole identity becomes, we, it's almost like we become consumed with what it is that we think we're supposed to do or we think we're supposed to experience, even if it's joy. Like, let it go. Life actually goes by pretty quickly. You blink your eyes and your children are teenagers and having babies and you're a parent and then a grandmother and I'm telling you, you know. So, all right, let's let's break this down for a moment because why are we even talking about this? But ask yourself, like, remember yourself as a child and remember yourself in a place of joy. Remember something that was like super fun to you. Can you connect to that joy as a child? What were the stories around that? When, when you were joyful, did people try to shut you down? When you were joyful, were you alone? Did people not get you or understand you? And how about when you were serious? Like, if, if you had those moments, did it help you to achieve success? Were you, again, were you alone because it was, you were intense? We all have these qualities about us that are just who they are, and we don't even know why we have these when we're a child, right? I mean, we, we can have children that are super focused and determined. It's because they're meant to, to do something that requires that, and they may be that way in every aspect of their life, and they may come across as being super intense, like my younger daughter, she's super focused and she, everything that she does, she has a very high achieve success rate, I guess you could say. Whatever success is, it's, it's an achievement for her. My other daughter, it's, it's enjoying life. And, you know, both are right. Neither one is wrong. But they both have an incredible sense of humor. And, you know, the other day, my younger daughter said to me, like, you complain a lot. Why are you so serious? I'm like, oh, man, really? Is that how I'm showing up? Have I forgotten who I am? Do I get uncomfortable when when people are funny? Am I uncomfortable in my own joy? What's my story around joy? What makes me happy? These are the questions you have to ask yourself in order to understand how and when you became so serious. Like, I want to invite you to remember, what are the things that bring you joy? Do you even know? I can't tell you how many times I have client discovery calls with people. We talk about things like this, and they don't even know what brings them joy. They've forgotten because they're so busy not being present that they don't even know what brings them joy. Is it travel? Is it food? Is it running? What is it? What brings you joy? What is it? What does joy feel like for you? What does it say about you if you're happy and you're in your joy? What does it say about you if you're serious and intense? Do you believe that you have to be that way to be successful? So that was one of my limiting beliefs is I believed I had to work super hard to be successful. And all working super hard got me was a near death experience. <laughs> 15 years ago. I mean, clearly I'm like way over this, but. It, it's true. Like I was working to prove myself. I'm going to climb the corporate ladder. I'm going to make so much money. I'm going to be a director as a woman in a male dominant environment. I'm going to whatever, whatever. Like who? Nobody. Who cares? And then when you have a near death experience health crisis, guess what? Nobody even cares about that either. I, I hate to say it. It's hard to hear, but it's true because everybody's in their own thing. And I'm not saying this to be sarcastic or, or mean. It, it, it's just true. Like we got our, we all got our own stuff. It's okay. It's okay. We have our own stuff and we take the wrong things too seriously. We take our job. We take our, our career. Maybe we take our role or identity and, and as a caregiver, right? Like, I mean, those things matter. We have to have those things to, to live, but they don't define us. You get to choose what defines you. And 
there's kind of a delicate balance between taking yourself seriously and not taking yourself seriously. Like, take yourself serious enough to stand up for yourself and not give your power away. I'm in a situation right now where somebody is taking me more seriously than I was taking myself. And I'm like, whoa, thanks for seeing that in me. Like, I I actually didn't be- wasn't believing in myself, but you taking me so seriously and making such a big deal out of this is showing me that, well, I actually do have value to provide. And I should take myself more seriously in, in certain things. So sometimes we don't take ourselves seriously because we're afraid of failure. Do you ever witness this in yourself? Sometimes you don't take things seriously because you're avoiding something. And then sometimes... We take the wrong things too seriously and we have forgotten how to have fun and have joy. So my invitation to you on the show is just to simply connect you back to your joy. The things that are fun for you, they're different for you than they are probably for the rest of the people in your family, maybe your friends, maybe you have friends that you can share that same joy with. I have one of my best friends we like to windsurf and surf together. It's we. It brings us joy. We do it together. It's super fun. So ask yourself in this moment, what area of my life am I just taking too serious? Where am I not giving myself permission to just relax? Maybe it's parenting. Oh my God, I did this. When my kids were young, I took it so seriously. They had to eat the right foods. They had to have manners. Everything was so serious. When I was planning my wedding, it's so serious. Like, I want everything to be right. It's so exhausting. And I find myself maybe 20 to 30% of the time still stuck in that, but at least I'm aware of it. It's because I'm passionate. I, Of course I want things to be awesome and the way that I envision them, but there's a lot of joy and in the acceptance of that, well, what if it's better? What if it's better than I imagined? That's possible. Have you ever thought of that? So what area of your life are you taking too seriously? Is it your job? Like, oh, my work is just so important if I'm so unhappy, but, and, and, and ask yourself, like, If you're really unhappy and taking it too seriously, are you blaming others for your unhappiness? Because if you are, nothing's going to change. You got to take some self-responsibility. That's where you got to take yourself serious is owning and taking responsibility and stop blaming others for your unhappiness because happiness is an inside job. Am I blaming others for, I don't know, anything? Am I attacking others? Am I, you know, projecting my emotions onto others? Or am I being projected on too? Am I being attacked? Like something doesn't feel right when I speak my truth or anything that can come up. Because it, we, we all navigate those experiences. And how can I find the joy in this moment? This moment right here. Because our lives are a sum of the experiences, which are some of the moments. And if we're not present, we're not going to remember those moments. Things don't exist unless you give them attention. The more attention that you give things, the more attention that you give fear or work or whatever it is, like the more it starts to define you. If you give your intention to just living in the present moment and allowing more joy. And that doesn't mean that you can't be a hard worker. That doesn't mean that you can't be intense. You can find the joy in being intense. You can find the joy in winning. You can find the joy in eating super healthy. And if you know, for me personally, I consider myself to have a very healthy relationship with food and I don't have the need to binge on sweet treats it just doesn't it's not and it's not that I'm not allowing myself to I just like I have a 
a way that I eat that I enjoy. And some other people might think it's a little strict because I, I don't eat donuts and things like that. I just don't have the need or desire to. If I did, I would, but I don't. It just, I find joy in eating super healthy, savory, nutrient-dense foods. I find joy in rich, deep relationships and connections with people, which means that I'm not going to have a big party when I turn 50. It's going to be a little bit smaller, intimate group of people. I still got six years. Don't worry, you guys. But, you know, like, what things do you find joy in? And what, what are you taking too seriously? What can you just, what area of your life can you relax in? Where can you let go of expectations and judgments and feelings and demands and shame and judgment? Like, what area of your life are you ready to let go of that? What would say about you if you just completely, shamelessly showed up in your joy? What would that look like? And what does it say about you if you do? Does it make people uncomfortable? That's not about you. What it is, is it dancing? Did someone tell you you can't dance, but it feels so good? Then do it. Is it surfing, but you know you're not that great compared to everybody in your family? This is me. But you love the water anyways? Like, just do it. Is there something you want to try that you haven't given yourself permission? And it sounds super fun, but you're kind of afraid? Well, do it anyway. <laughs> The number one regret people have at the end of their life is there's, well, there's a couple of them, but the number one is that they didn't live their own truth. But another one is that they didn't give themselves permission to have fun. So I'm giving you permission to stop taking yourself so seriously, being this boring adult that has to, and I'm not saying you're boring, but you know, evaluating the areas of your life where you don't give yourself permission to have joy and fun and do it with your children because 18 years goes by really really fast do it with your spouse you've got a lifetime together hopefully maybe you're you know whatever a long time together like you get you it can be fun and I know it's hard sometimes and because it's hard sometimes because it's hard a lot of times that's why it's even more important to do the things that you love and bring you joy It's one of the things that we work through in our North Star Collective. I I think it's week six, where we go through authentic connection to joy. What are the things that feel good? Eating healthy food, taking care of your body, going on trips, drinking that glass of wine, whatever it is. What area of my life can I experience more joy, more fun? What are the things that bring me joy? What does joy feel like in my body? Who are the people that I enjoy being around? What are the things that I really want to experience in this life? What excuses am I making as to reasons that I'm not doing it? I don't have time. I don't have money. It's too hard. I don't have support. What is one one of those things you're willing to do? One of those things you're willing to shift today? I challenge you. I am challenging you to do that thing by yourself, with someone else, it doesn't matter, but to do the thing that brings you joy. Even if it is eating that piece of chocolate cake, whatever that is, like, what are the things that bring you joy? And what area of my life can I relax? Where can I relax a little? Where can I stop taking myself so seriously? Now, there's a time and a place to take yourself seriously, right? Like, I, I have this goal. I, Started in 2016 writing a book. I got 90% done. It was all about conscious parenting. I may or may not publish that book. I'm not sure. I know that I am meant to write another one. Well, I might want to take myself a little seriously on that or it'll never get done. So there's a time and a place to set intentions, keep aligned action, have accountability. I'm talking about day-to-day present moments with your loved ones. Yes, we can do hard things. Glennon Doyle says that. I know that. And we do hard things. But we get to choose how we show up in those things. And full disclosure, this is not easy for me. That's why I'm speaking about it. So if you're looking at me and thinking, I've got this down. I look like I do a lot of fun things. I have to consciously choose and work through this because... I actually am an intense person. I love to live life to the fullest. It get 
lights me up. And sometimes that means I'm intense and I take things seriously and I love hard and I'm super passionate and I fall hard too. That's just who I am. And maybe some of you can relate to that. Maybe some of you don't take things seriously enough and you don't get anything done. What's re- what's that really about? Do you really believe in yourself? Do you believe that? the confidence? Do you have the confidence in, to overcome the doubt that it's possible? Either way, whatever it is, we are who we are. What is a way that you can start to choose more joy in your life? Stop taking yourself so seriously. I mean, I'm talking even your goals, right? I don't love goals. I love intentions, which is more of a way of being. Like, I like to set goals and have a vision that can be fluid and change. As long as you're not judging yourself when you don't meet them. But asking yourself, you know, was this goal really in alignment with me? Is it the right time? Sometimes, like, my book writing goal. It clearly wasn't the right time because I was going to write a book on conscious parenting. And my kids weren't even fully grown. I didn't... I've learned so much since then. That book was not meant to be published in 2016. So my invitation for you as you go throughout your day today, whether you're driving right now to work, home from work... Make a commitment to yourself to do something in your joy and the commitment to let go of something where you take yourself too seriously in your life. Thank you for joining me. I'd love to hear personally what you're going to let go of. What seriousness are you going to let go of? And how do you express joy? Do you just like do the silly dance alone or with your kids? Do you like make funny faces at yourself in the mirror? Do you watch humor comedy I don't know what do you do I want to know because you know I need a little help too sometimes I have my ways of doing it I am trying to break that cycle of taking everything so serious everything so heavy all the time that's not the truth of who I want to be I don't think it's the truth of who you want to be so share with me share the love I'm sharing the love with you share me your ideas on how you're how you do this? How do you navigate your seriousness? How do you let yourself go be free and in your joy? And let's be in it together. Sending you so much love. Thank you. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you next week. The content of this podcast is to educate, inspire, and inform you of pathways to an embodied healing self. It is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice from your medical doctor, therapist, registered dietitian, or nutritionist for any questions you may have regarding your diagnosis or condition. Hello, friends, and thank you so much for joining me today and being a part of this community. I know there are many other podcasts that you could be tuning into, and I am deeply honored that you chose to listen in and be present with me today. I love and cherish and appreciate you, and I want to invite you to join our tribe and Facebook group under jenmons.com forward slash connect. I would also love to gift you your guide to discovering and overcoming the self-limiting beliefs standing in the way of you living in optimal health, more energy, fulfillment, and self-confidence to create an embodied, healthy, whole you. You can find this at genmons.com forward slash tribe. I also have one small request to help spread the love. In order for this podcast to show up in the feed of social media platforms of other like-minded people, we need reviews. So please head on over to genmons.com slash podcast to leave a review. You will also find other inspiring episodes on that page. So I personally read these reviews weekly and would love to give you a shout out and share your kind words with our listeners. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook as Jen Mons or The Holistic Coach with the W Holistic and Jen Mons, J-E-N-M-O-N-S dot com. Thank you so much and have an amazing day. Aloha.